Hello everyone, this is pre-algebra lesson 7-4, equations with no solutions or infinitely many solutions. Hmm, what could that be? In this lesson, we'll uh, be able to determine the number of solutions an equation has. Let's start with explore it. The great Carlo called twins Jasmine and James onto the stage. Jasmine, multiply your age by three and add six, then multiply the sum by two. James, multiply your age by two and add four, then multiply the sum by three. I predict you will both get the same number. Hmm. Um, part A, write expressions to represent Greg Carlos' instructions to each twin. So what are some expressions that we could do? we could have. So whatever Jasmine's age is, we don't know, but they're twins, so their age should be the same. So we can represent x to be the age, okay? So x uh, multiply by three. So three x and add six, and then multiply this sum, the whole thing, by two, okay? That is for Jasmine. And then for James, for James, we're um, we're gonna multiply his age by two and add four, and then multiply the whole thing by three, and they'll get the same answer. Is that correct? Well, let's move on to part B. Choose four whole numbers for the twins' age and test each expression. Okay, so we're gonna make a table. If X is five, if they're five years old, Jasmine is gonna be two times three X plus six. And James is 2x plus 4 times 3. Okay. Um, so if it's 5, 2 times 3 times 5 plus 6. It's going to be 15 plus 6, 21 times 2 is 42. Okay. What about James? 3 times 2 times 5 plus four is going to be three times 10 plus four, 14. And that's 42, so it's the same. What if it's 13, okay? What if they're 13? So two times three times 13 plus six, okay? Um, is going to be actually you can simplify the expression to 6x plus 12 and so that could be 6 times 13 plus 12 which is 90 and then for james that's also 6x plus 12 so 6 times 13 plus 12 is also 90 and if you test some other ages, if they're 20 years old, they're going to be 132. If they're 45 years old, they're 282 and 282. So if you simplify the expressions, they're actually going to be the same thing, 6x plus 12, right? So they're going to get the same answer. So what do you notice about your results? No matter what number uh, I try, I've got the same number for both expressions. They both simplify. 6x plus 12, right? 
All right, focus on math practices. Choose three more values and use them to evaluate each expression. What do you notice? Do you think this is true for all values? Yeah, we already have enough values over here, right? Um, so you can say the results are the same. The expressions will be equal for any value. Okay, so let's think about um, will a one variable equation always have only one solution? Okay, example one, solve an equation with infinitely many solutions. For what values of X will the triangle, will the rectangle and triangle have the same perimeter? So we want to see when they're gonna have the same perimeter. Perimeter is the length around their side. Okay, so that's also 2x plus 3, that's also 3. So you can have 2 times 2x plus 3 plus 2 times x for the perimeter of this rectangle. Perimeter of this triangle, you can multiply 3 by the side, by each side. Okay, and you're going to let them equal to each other. And you notice something weird. Okay, so that's going to be 4x plus 6 plus 2x, and that's 6x plus 6, and that's going to be um, 6x plus 2, and if you solve for it, if, if they need to be the same, you're going to subtract 6x on both sides, and then the x is gone. You get 6 is equal to 2. Wait, uh, 6, I'm sorry. 6 is equal to 6. Oh no, what happens? What happens if we have no variable at the end? Is six equal to six? That doesn't mean you don't have an answer. You're gonna have an answer, but it's a special answer. That doesn't mean you don't need the final step, okay? Even if you don't have the variable, you still need to use the final equation is six equal to six? Is that true? Yeah, that is true. That means for any X, it works. They're gonna have the same perimeter for any X, okay? The expressions are the same, six X plus six, six X plus six. So whatever X you put in, their perimeters are gonna be the same. So that means you, ju you don't just have one X that's the same, um, that has the same value, um, all x will give the same values for the parameters for these. So that means you have infinitely many solutions, okay? So remember, if your equation has no variable at the end and then, but, and the equation makes sense and it's true, that means it works for all variable. So it has infinitely many solutions, okay? So let's see if you can do try it. See if you have the same so kind of solution. Okay, how many solutions does the equation 3x plus 15 equals 2x plus 10 plus x plus 5 have? So let's simplify. 2x plus x is going to be 3x. 10 plus 5 is going to be 15. So the expressions are equal to each other. So you know the x is going to be canceled out. And then you have 15 is, is equal to 15. And 15 is indeed equal to 15. So the equation has infinitely many solutions, okay? Convince me, if the value of x is negative, would the equation still be true? Explain. Does it still, is it still true? Are they still equal to each other if x is negative. So say if x is negative 2, then is x 3x plus 15 is equal to 3x plus 15? Or are these equal to each other? Yeah, because the expressions are actually going to be the same. They're both 3x plus 15. So 3 times negative 2 plus 15 is equal to 2 times negative 2 plus 10 uh, minus 2 plus 5. Okay, we're substituting negative 2 into the x. You get negative 6 plus 15 
and then negative four plus 10 minus two plus five, and that's going to be nine is equal to nine, okay? So yeah, it also works. So it, no matter what number x is, it's gonna work, okay? The statement 15 equals 15 shows that all values of x are solutions. For example, if x is equal to negative two, then three times negative two plus 15 equals two times negative two plus 10 plus minus two plus five, or nine is equal to nine. A true statement. So no matter what the value of x is, the expressions Okay, very interesting, isn't it? Yeah, you might not always get one solution. You might get a lot more than um you expect so example two solve an equation with one solution anna and lee played soccer for the same number of hours one week how many hours did lee play on sunday okay anna played x hours am 1.2 hours pm x hours on every day on am so she plays the same number of hours <coughs> in the morning <coughs> bless you <coughs> bless me <laughs> and same number of hours in the afternoon and same for lee what wait not same for lee um he has different hours every day okay so that's her schedule um we want to find how many hours did lee play on sunday Okay, so we want to figure out x. They play soccer for the same number of hours one week. So if you add all of them, it's going to be equal to each other, right? So 1.2 plus 1.2 plus 1.2 plus 1.2. So 4 times 1.2 plus 4x is equal to x plus 2.5 plus 2x plus 4.5. Okay, so that's going to be um, 4.8 plus 4x, which is equal to 3x plus 7. And solving for your equation, you have, um, wait, subtract 3x on both sides, you get x here, and subtract 4.8 on both sides, and you're going to get 2.2. So x is going to be 2.2. And then you can figure out how many hours did Lee play on Sunday. It's x hours. So he played 2.2 hours. Lee played soccer for 2.2 hours on Sunday. So in this case, you have an answer, one solution. All right, example three, solve an equation with no solution. What happens? What will, what will be the case where we have no solution? So let's look at example three. Um, Jill makes uh, three bracelets and Mika makes two bracelets. They both use the same number of string colors. How many colors should they use to make the same amount of money? Okay, so, so Jill's $5 per basket plus $2 for each string color, okay? And then Mika, three per bas bracelet, and three for each string color. So how many colors should they use to make the same amount of money? You want to set them equal to each other. Um, Jill makes three bracelets. And then Mika makes two bracelets of these. So, so um, what is the number for x so that 
they make the same amount of money. Okay, so simplify that. That's going to be 6x. Wait, that's 15 plus 6x. And that's equal to 6 plus 6x. And then you subtract 6x on both sides. And then you're left with 15 is equal to 6. But is that true? 15 is not equal to 6. That is not true. Because that is not true, there's no number of string colors that results in Jill and Mika making the same amount of money. So this is when you have no solution. Okay? So when your variable x disappears, do not panic. Do not freak out. You still have two different types of solution. It's either infinitely many or no solution. If your equation makes sense, if your equation still makes sense without your variable, it will be infinitely many solution. It works for any number of x, any values of x. If your equation does not make sense, 15 is not equal to 6, then you have a no solution. Okay? So you're going to use, if your variables are gone, doesn't mean you did anything incorrectly, you still have to observe your last equation, okay? So let's see if you can do the last try by yourself. How many solutions does the equation 4x plus 8 is equal to 0.1x plus 3 plus 3.9x have? Explain. See if you can do it by yourself. Come back when you're ready. We have one more example um, after this. Are you ready? All right, so let's solve for it. Um, simplify the expression on the right. 3.9 plus 0.1 is equal to 4x. So if you subtract 4x on both sides, you get 8 is equal to 3. Hmm. Is that true? No, it is not true. So how many solutions does this um, equation have? None. No solution. The equation is equivalent to 8 equals 3, which is not a true statement. OK. So example four, determine the number of solutions by inspection. How can you determine the number of solution each equation has without solving? So look at part A. You can simplify the expression um, and you can see that x plus 10 should equal to x minus 10 if you simplify both expressions. Are they equal to each other? No. If you subtract x on both sides, 10 is not equal to negative 10. So it has no solution. Okay. Part B, simplify your expression. 3x plus 12 is equal to 3x plus 12. Are they equal? Yeah, 3x plus 12 is exactly the same thing as 3x plus 12. Okay, so when you simplify and you get the same expression, that means it has infinitely many solutions. And even if you simplify, you don't get the same expression, that means you have no solution. But when you're simplifying, you might get what x is equal to. So 3x is equal to negative 9. That means you have one solution. You, if you end up with an expression with an equation where you have one variable on the same on one side, that means you're gonna have one solution. Okay, so these are some general types of those three cases. So let's see if you can determine how many solutions there are for a try parts A, B, and C. Come back when you're ready for answers. Okay, are you ready? Part A, 3x plus 1.5 is equal to 2.x plus 4.7. So these are already simplified. How do you know? How do you know if they're going to have one solution, no solution, or infinitely many? You can try to solve them, and that's fine. Okay, so uh, subtract 2.5x on both sides you're going to get 0.5x is equal to um, 
4.7 minus 1.5. And this, you don't ha even have to solve further than that. That means you're going to get an answer, right? Since you have one variable on one side and then you have constant on the other. So that's going to be one solution. Okay. And then part B, you can distribute this expression and simplify. And you have 3x plus 6 is equal to 3x minus 6. Oh, they look very similar. If you subtract 3x on both sides, you get 6 is equal to negative 6. And that's not, that's not true. So what does that mean? It has no solution. Solution. Okay, no solution. What about the last one? You can already guess, but see if uh, we still have the, the solution, the last solution that we're waiting for, okay? Um, 9x minus 4 is equal to 5x plus 4x. If you simplify that, it's 9x minus 4. And they are the same expression. So you're going to end up with negative 4 is equal to negative 4. And that is true, which means we have infinitely many solutions. All right, good. So that was our lesson. One variable equation has infinitely many solutions when solving results in a true statement, such as two equals two. One variable equation has one solution when solving results uh, with one value for the variable, such as x is equal to two. One variable equation has no solution when solving results in an untrue statement, such as two is equal to three. That's not true. Okay, so remember these type of questions. That was lesson seven dash four equations with no solutions or infinitely many solutions. In the next lesson, seven dash five, lesson five, we'll compare proportional relationships. If you have any questions so far, please ask Ms. Kane class. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.